God kind of life and the God kind of love. Do we really love like God or do we love conditionally? Do we love conditionally or do we love like God? Which one? Why do we love conditionally? Say again. I want y'all to write down a verse of scripture. And I want you to go back and read it in the uh, New Living Translate translation. If you can you can Google it or if you have Bibles, you can do that. And it's it's first Corinthians chapter nine and twenty seven. And you said something that was so key. You said we have to train ourselves. If you're not used to getting up in the morning, praying, reading your word before you go to work, then you have to do what? Train yourself. Because we have to understand, it, you know, I always told someone, I say, it's like smoking a cigarette. When you first went to puffing, your body rejected it. You started coughing. Then you had to train your body to endure it. Then after a while, you went from 1 to 21 cigarettes. Now when you want to quit, you need the Lord. Because now what the world calls an addiction, God calls a stronghold. It has a grip on you now. Well, the, no matter what it is, drinking, whatever it is, whatever the hang-up is, it's a stronghold. Now you need the Lord to deliver you from it. And so 1 Corinthians 9 and 27 it's real easy. He said, I beat my body like an athlete. Train it to do what it should. Your body don't want to do what it's supposed to. Your body wants to do its own thing. Because it's flesh. Flesh gets out of control. And this is when you have to bring your soul under control. That was a free one. Y'all need to look that up. Now, I want us to go to the hard book. And we're going to talk about a few things. Um, what's on your phone? Miss? Oh, we're making great time. Bless the Lord. Okay, go in your hard books to... We already passed that, so that was last week. Yes, Lord. Here we go. Page 72 in your hard book. And this is this was key and pivotal. How many questions do we have left? Six. We're going to close in the hard book. Let's finish the questions and we'll, we'll close in the hard book. Go ahead. Next question. Explain the following statement about the author. Jesus promised to give us recreation and new creation. Let's go. Um, we receive a global work when we come to Jesus and receive him as our Lord and Savior. When we receive Christ, and I've always said this, you got all the Christ you'll ever need in life. You won't need any more Christ once you receive Him. You got all the Christ you're ever going to need. But see, when you get Christ, see, there, there's a will of God, there is a way of God, and then there's the work of God. And in order to understand the will, you must receive the Lord, and then you will understand His way when He begins to teach you, and then He will allow you to participate in His work, which is furthering the gospel. Most people think that i got to be preaching to further the gospel. No. Just be holy. Folks will look at you and say, man, it's something about that individual. And that's when they come and say, hey, man, you're always happy. What you always happy about? This, what must I do to get this? Man, I'm just living for the Lord. You've been tracking. <laughs> Next question. When Adam was in the garden, was back in Genesis now, God created everything, placed Adam there. 
the work was finished. Was it not? What did Adam have to do? Keep it. Sin. When you were a child and you were in your parents' home, you didn't build a house. Did you? <laughs> he said, I built the house in the backyard. <laughs> you are enjoying what was already there for you. This is what Adam was, in, he was enjoying what God had already created. It wasn't until he fell that he could no longer enjoy it and he had to work in the sweat of his brow. That's why we sweat today. Because of the sin or the fall of man. This is why women travail when they have children. It's part of the curse. In the beginning, there's a blessing, then there's a curse. Adam's curse, well, Adam, where you didn't have to do anything in the garden, and the trees were giving you all of its fruit, now you're going to plant a seed and grow the tree that was once feeding you. Now, everything that you're going to have to grow it, brother. I'm not giving it to you anymore. Now you're going to sweat. Now you're going to work. Now you're going to labor. The woman, because of what you have done, great. It's the closest thing to death for having a child. He said 50, got a 50 50 chance. But it's the closest thing to death. And it reminds us, I don't know if many people really pay attention, but every time you go to work and sweat, that's a reminder of the curse. Just because it's hot, it doesn't matter. When you're sweating and you're working, that's a reminder of the fall of man. When people are in the labor room and they're, and they're having children, that's a reminder of the curse. It's a reminder. It's a visible reminder, and for some, it's a physical reminder. Because some folks are looking at like, I don't want to go through that. And some are going through, give it to me. Give me that little shot. Take away all this pain. That's why they're shooting them all in the spine and all this other good stuff, trying to take the pain away. Because the pain is so familiar. It's a reminder. When you see the rainbow, it's a reminder that God said he would never destroy this world ever again by water. He said, I wouldn't destroy it again. He said, I just won't do it by water. That's why we have the rainbow. All of these are reminders. We take a lot of stuff for granted. We think we're here just to be here. We think we're here on man. We think we're here to get great jobs and we're producing our careers. No, you're here for one reason and one reason only. And that's to give God glory. That's it. Everything else is extra. The jobs you have is extra. God gave you that. Now he's saying, hey, look, I need you to thank me for what I gave you. Thank you for that job you got. Thank you for the house I gave you. Thank you for the car that you drive that never fails you. And even when it did fail you, you know, thank me for helping you get it done. Because you know you didn't have money. I mean, God is saying, I need you to, to thank and praise me in everything that you do. We don't do that. We don't do that at all. Somebody thought I was crazy. I said, you know, I'm going to the grocery store. I got to write a list. And they were like, why? You know what you're going to get. Because I say, I know if I go in there, I'm going to go up and down every aisle and I'm going to spend all of God's money. And they laugh. But it's God's money. And then God said, I need you to be a good steward of what I give you. See, I'll let you keep 90. All I need you to do is just give the 10 back to me. That's what he said. That's why it's called the tithe. We don't understand that. And we don't operate in that. That's a spiritual law. And a law is just a fixed principle of operation. It leaves no room for negotiation, debate, or discussion. A stop sign means stop. You stop or you get a ticket. Or you get in a, they don't call it accidents anymore. You get in a car crash. Because you fail to do what you're supposed to do. And God is saying, when you fail to do what you're supposed to do, and I've given you what to do, it's your fault. 
not mine. So if I tell you the wages of sin is death and you still want to sin, and you get out there and something happened, you get sick or whatever the case may be, I told you what the wages were. Did he not? It's in the book. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, there's always that but, but the gift of God is eternal life. Do you want the gift or do you want the wages? Everybody chasing wages. You notice that, right? In the world, the world says, get all you can, can all you get. God says, give, and it should come back to you. Good man's pressed down and shake it together. Right? The world says, get every dime you can, and then you can't save it. God said, give, and I give you more than all I need you to do is be a giver. It's kind of crazy. Get all you can, can all you get, give. What do you mean give? I'm trying to say, no, just give. And you'll have more than you've ever bought before just by giving. It's the revelation of a difference. The glass half empty or half full is how you see life. How do you see? What does promotion come from? The Bible tells us it doesn't come from the north, the south, the east, or the west, but it comes from God. So why do we depend on man to promote us? If God's doing the promoting. Why do we depend on systems to promote us if God's doing the promoting? God will take you from the bottom and put your name on the top. It's like that. People know, where, where does God come from? Where, I thought he was like number 26. And he's number one now? Or she's number one now? God will cause people to bless you and they don't even know why they bless you. I don't know why I'm doing this, but the Lord just told me to do this. Amen. Give it up. It's all called a revelation of a difference. Turn in your books, page 72. We're going we're gonna to close here. Your hard books. I want you to pull up your hard books and we're going to page 72. And I really need you to see this because you're going to see that a lot of people think they're serving God and they're not. A lot of people think they're with the Lord and they're not. They're not. A lot of people think because they preach the word of God, they with the Lord. They're not. How do you know that, Keith? Easy. Why would he say in that day, many will say, Lord, Lord, have I not did this and that in your name? And he's going to look at them and say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I know you not. Anybody read that? Y'all read that? That's kind of like disheartening, don't you think? You're like, man, I've been doing all this in, in Jesus' name and he don't even know me? That's kind of like, that's jacked up, Jesus. Am I really doing? You might want to check yourself. I remember the thing of the song, check yourself before you wreck yourself. You might want to check yourself and make sure you're on the Lord's side. Because a lot of folks are doing stuff in the name of the Lord and they're not with the Lord. It doesn't matter what kind of cloth you got on, no matter how long you've been doing it, no matter what your title is, if you're not with the Lord, He's going to let you know in the end. You have been doing it for 30 something years, but you're not with me doing it. You did that all by yourself. I, I had no part in that. See, y'all got to understand that that would take folks up too. The only bad part about that, when he snatched the carpet, they come down real quick. Whatever God gives you, you keep. 72. And we also going to, I want uh, turn in your uh, Bibles. And I want you to turn to Mark. This is in your Bible, Mark, uh, verse chapter 10, verse, verse 17. And let me know when you get there.
So we'll read it out loud real quick. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now, I want y'all to keep this in mind, what this guy is asking. Good master. The word good, we've already discovered. No one is good outside of God. Not even us. No one's good. Only God is good. We're a mess. But he was calling Jesus good master. When you look at these terms, you'll see good master, rabbi, all this other good stuff. But he was saying good master. He was, taught, he was calling Jesus a good master. That was it. And we're going to see that as it play out. Sir, read... Uh, Mark 10 and 18. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. The young man says, Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said, Eternal life. It's the same thing as what? What must I do? to be saved. Same question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do to be saved? But Jesus stopped him in his tracks because he kept he said, good master. He didn't say Jesus. He didn't say thou son of David. He didn't say any of that. And we'll look throughout the Bible. You will hear when people came to Jesus, they was they were saying, Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David. Who was he the son of? In the natural, as, as, the, as people thought, Joseph. But when they said, thou son of David, what were they saying? That's prophetic. The seed of David, that's prophetic. They're prophetically speaking. Now, when you say, thou son of David, now you got Jesus' attention because you saying some stuff, man, that you don't even know about. So you got Jesus' attention now. You're speaking prophetically now. Thou son of David, how do you know about that? Now you got my attention. This is why when he always moved and he was in these crowds, all it took was somebody to tap in to the Holy Spirit and he was right there. Y'all, they had Jesus' attention. He said, wait a minute, virtue jumped out of me. Somebody touched me, man. They're like, Jesus, everybody been touching you. We in the crowd. He said, no, no, no. Virtue jumped out of me. And he looked, and there she was on the ground. Because she had said within herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be made whole. This is someone that has spent all of their money on physicians. She had an issue. Everybody like to preach the issue of blood, the issue of blood. Yeah, this woman was bleeding daily. Shouldn't even be alive. Daily. Had exhausted all the money. Don't even supposed to be in public because that was just a no-no. Being in public. Doing that time of ministration, that's what it was called. But this, this woman had a flow that couldn't stop. And she said, you know, even if it cost me my life, because that's what it would have cost her had they caught her. She couldn't be walking upright. So she had to get down. And she said, I'm going to get what I need. How many people are willing to press to even if their life is on the line to get what they need for Christ? Isn't that amazing? Let's stick to the story. Got your attention, huh? What you have to understand, as our text is teaching us, somebody at the door? I need to stop knocking. What we have to understand is that Jesus was asking this young ruler, why are you calling me? Why are you calling me good master? That's what he wanted to know. Why are you calling me good master? Do, do you even know who I am? Why are you calling me good master? Did the young ruler have the revelation that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God? Was he identifying Jesus as God, manifested in the flesh? Nope. The million dollar question was, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, he got the answer, uh, what must I do to be saved? But it's the same question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? 
Because once you're saved, you're what? You live eternally. And you're going somewhere. Because you're a spirit, you're already eternal. But when you get saved, you just choose your direction. You got a question? Go ahead. He gave. We're going to look at his answers. I'm, I'm going to be a different question. So. The, the, the same question was, what must I do to inherit eternal life, right? Yeah. Right? Now, here's the thing. We are spirits. Do y'all know that? Have an earthly encounter. Do y'all realize that? Your flesh is an earth suit. Do you understand that? I mean, I'm, am I freaking you guys out? You are a spirit. There is a spirit in you. The body that you have is an earth suit. You have an earthly encounter because there's only one way to come into this life, and that's what? Through a body. Jesus said, prepare me a body. Did he not? So, if he had to come in this way, and this is where you'll understand, he said, the thief does not come through the front door. What is the front door? You have to come into this earth through a what? Through a body, right? The thief didn't come through a body. I'm hitting some heavy stuff now. It's, 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 it's going. Satan didn't come through a body to come down here. Jesus came through a body. Satan didn't come. He just got kicked out of heaven and boom, he was here. No body. This is why he has to use folks. See, if you start studying about a man and the 12 disciples in Judas, they say Satan planted a seed in Judas. Then he left, and then all of a sudden that seed germinated, and Judas became dark, and then Satan did what? What's the next thing Satan did after, after there was no light in Judas? What did he do? He entered into him. See in your Bible. Light and dark can't mix. So Judas had been hanging with Christ. Satan plants a seed. Darkness germinates in Judas. Say, say, now nah, I can get in. I get in here now. There ain't no light in here. The same way. This is us. Can spirits come inside? Yeah. If you dark, there must be some darkness. See, your flesh is warring with the spirit daily, constantly. Flesh say, I want to do my own thing. Spirit say, No, you need to do the right thing. Fleshy, no, I want this. Flesh, and, and spirit say, no, you don't need that, man. That's bad. You don't want that. But flesh is saying, I got to have it. We we'll use money. We we'll use like fines. We we'll use ball. Is that a, you know, I always like, I teach my nephew, is that a need or a want? And he's like, well, uh, uh. And then he's going buying all these hundred, two hundred dollars shoes. And they bought one pair of two hundred dollars shoes and could have got four or five pairs of shoes. You see what I'm saying? Because sales all the time. But that's what we're talking about. We're going to get to your question. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life. Now I want you to stay in Mark. I want one of you guys to go into Matthew chapter 19. You stay in Mark. Somebody go to Matthew. Matthew 19 and 17. He said that if thou wilt enter into life. Keep the commandments that he said unto him, which? Jesus said, keep the commandments, right? Everybody, somebody in Matthew yet? Matthew 19, verse 17. Read it. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commands. And then, then who said something in verse 18? 18. He said unto him, which. Now listen, check this out. Jesus talking in verse 17. He cut Jesus off. Y'all see that? Verse 17 is Jesus. Verse 18 is the young man. Look at it. Jesus say, look. Wait, hold on. Why callest thou me good? Verse 17 in Matthew. 
Why calls out me good? There is none good but one. That is God. Because the young man said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And then Jesus said, if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And while Jesus was, get, was talking, this young man interrupted and said, and then he said to him, which, which, which one? Which one? Which one, Jesus? Wait, what's the word for Matthew? Matthew 19, verse 7. It, am I, am I, am I, I may be a little dramatic, but he cut Jesus off and said, which one? You know how your mom would be talking to you like, I need you going to do this. I need you going to cut the grass on this side. What side, mom? There's two sides to the house. What side? He just cut it. Just cut Jesus off. Which one? He, now, he just called him good master. Good master. What must I do to hear eternal life? Jesus started talking about the commandments. Which one? Sound like anybody in here just like want to cut both off when they talk. It's called interjection. Why you cut me off? Why you cut me off? Because they don't want to listen to them. You're saying something they don't want to hear. I'm saying something. Jesus talking to them. He's like, I don't want to hear all that. Which one? Which one are you talking about, man? All I ask you is one question. Y'all following this? People do that today. All I, I ask you one question. Now, you want to give me all that? I ain't asked you all that. I asked you for one question. Which one then, man? Which one? Which one? Which commandment? So I can go ahead and tell you I keep it. Listen. Jesus said, I need you to keep the commandments. That's plural, right? He said, what? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which is indicative of the fact of singular, which means which one? He never said, I keep all ten. He said, which? Y'all try it. It's in your Bible now. I ain't making nothing up. It's in your Bible. Y'all looking like, he's making that up. He's making that up. Jesus gave him ten commandments. And this was the ten that Jesus enumerated. He said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy mother and thy father. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And before Jesus could complete the ten, the young man said unto him, this is Matthew 19 and 20. Somebody read Matthew 19 and 20 real quick. He cuts Jesus off again. He cut Jesus off again. Jesus talking, man. Can you imagine just sitting there talking with Jesus? And then somebody somebody just interrupted Jesus. Hey man, you don't lost your mind. Could you imagine sitting on the mountain and Jesus teaching the beatitude? And he's saying, Bless it. And, then, and like, bless it what, Jesus? <laughs> just cutting him off. This man is cutting him off. Tuning him out. Why? Because I ain't trying to hear that. I ask you one question. You name it all ten commandments. I ask you which one. And then when you start naming all ten, man, I keep all those. That's what he said. Did he not? What did he say? Did he not say that? It's in y'all Bible. I ain't making it up. All these I have kept from my youth. Meaning, I ain't sinned one time while I was growing up. That's what he's saying. I ain't sinned one time. He know when he was a baby, he said, I ain't sinned when I was a baby. I ain't, even, I ain't even cry for milk and I ain't want none. I ain't cry just to get my way because, you know, people are trained to cry. Baby cries now. Yeah, they just don't stick something in their mouth. He said from his youth all the way up, I ain't never sinned. I kept every time. That's what he said. It's in your book. It's in the Bible. That's what he said. Then Jesus. Man, I love when Jesus is like, you know what? It's my turn now. Jesus says, my turn. Then Jesus, looking at him, the word says, behold, in Mark, Mark 10 and 21. Then Jesus, y'all might want to turn that. Then Jesus, beholding him, he looked at him. And he loved him. He loved him so much, he just, he just gave him the word and loved him. He loved him. He said unto him, One thing thou lackest. You telling me you kept all the commandments from your youth up. You done cut me off twice. But even though you cut me off